I've seen women and girls on the street, but I've never really thought about what their experiences were like. And people, I mean, we've had emails from men who buy sex, who go to strip clubs, who who said, I never really looked at girls and women as real people before. Mm -hmm. um, from law enforcement who are beginning to kind of change that perception. And so, right, a lot of the work that we do, in addition to kind of the core direct services, housing, healthcare, employment training, education, I mean, we, right, I could go on for a while about kind of our programming, but a big piece of this is really survivor-led and, and having survivor voices. Um, kind of as experts at the table, not in a token way where folks get up and kind of just tell their story, right? Um, which is helpful to an extent, but that's it's very limiting. It's very limiting role for survivors, but where survivors are really taking kind of leadership um, around this. I just came back from DC late last night, which is probably why I'm a little bit discombobulated today. Um, but just came back from like three days in, in DC doing our victim survivor leader training, which is our model at GEMS. And, two of the young women who came through the program and now on staff doing training, providing technical assistance for social workers, law enforcement. Um, and, and so, I mean, kind of that model of survivor empowerment and survivor leadership and, and making sure that we look at this issue not in a not in a vacuum aside from other social justice issues, right? And, and sometimes this issue can get framed as kind of poor little girls, bad men, right? And a little bit sensationalized. Um, and I think, right, those of us in the field have kind of seen that a little bit over the last couple of years and so continually trying to bring this back to you know this being part of the continuum of gender-based violence um being interlinked with racism and classism and poverty in our country um and how we fail young people particularly young people who live in various zip codes um who we think don't deserve a chance anyway and so right that there's real institutional and systemic failure about kind of uh, where we see this issue and who this issue ultimately impacts. And I mean, right, I, I, frankly, I mean, I think it wouldn't have taken us almost five years in Albany to pass this legislation if the girls who were being impacted predominantly, overwhelmingly, like 90 plus percent, 95 plus percent, weren't low income girls of color. Um, and so, right, not, not addressing the issue of trafficking and commercial sexual exploitation mm -hmm. in kind of a race, gender, class lens, I think is kind of problematic. Um, and it's something that I think those of us who've been in the field for a while are continually kind of putting out there.